Good morning, and welcome to Flaming Freedom Live. This is where we talk about LGBT subjects from a liberty perspective, or else sometimes we just shoot the poop about stuff that's not really on topic at all. This is your host, Dale. And Lauren. And Elena. So this is... This We're a little is, bit out of order, so I was kind of... I didn't know if... I, this I'm, is I a guess, new setup. I know. It's am crazy. I chair three? Am I chair two? <laughs> am I... I'm having such identity One issues. and a half? I don't know. You're having identity issues. Yeah. Am I number one or three or four, two? In, in, ter- in technical well, anyway, terms, you're on mic three. Um, yeah, that's right. That's what I thought. But mm-hmm. nobody knows that this is mic three. Anyway, <laughs> nice to see you face to face. Like you can actually I have a conversation. We can be really I'm engaging. I'm not staring at my computer we, all the yeah, time. Yeah, like, oh, I'm so excited. The way that I'm oriented over there my... is actually very difficult to look at the people I'm talking to. Yeah, now yeah. you can join in in our conversations and, when we look at each other and talk. Yeah, now we have a mixer monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think he, I don't know if he likes that term. Probably not, but. Actually, our Mixer Monkey will actually be on the show for one segment. When, yes, after Lauren goes, one, he's going to take your leave. place. And then I'm going to take his place and be the Mixer Monkey for the last segment. Nobody can really replace Lauren. I mean, come on. And, well, for exactly. Sit in for. No, and, but you can uh, take it. <laughs> so we have some topics specifically for uh, Hammer, Melania, and I to discuss. Uh, for No, that's Hammer and me. I said that wrong. My grammar was bad. So. Uh the D and D geeks, eh, right? It's okay. We're going to talk about geeky ga- tabletop gaming stuff. So nothing wrong with that. I actually got to see the end of a, a geeky table tabletop game last night. It was like, oh? yeah, it was like some Battlestar Galactica game. Oh, was, that, that's not a. It was like a, a tabletop s- RPG. That's just a. That's just a. Oh, it's not board game. A board game. See, right. I don't. I don't know these things. Tabletop was- RPGs are much more <laughs> elaborate and geeky. And that's kind of what I'm going to get into. more paper. That's kind of what I'm going to get into is they've been trying to dumb them down to make them more mainstream. Mm-hmm. I, f- I feel like that's kind of been, I feel is, like they're dumbing them down to make them more mainstream. Well, but there's a lot of people who want to be a geeky gamer person. Like, right. I want to be a geeky gamer person, but I can't be. Like, I haven't, there's a lot of rules to learn yes. first. And so right. I, and I, that's I, why I they're dumbing down the rules for yeah. people so like I you. So I actually probably, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> no, I, no, no. but we need this. Not because she can't they're, do it, but because serving, she doesn't want to devote that much energy. They're serving it. a market right. and I appreciate right. it. Oh, right. Well, no, they're, anyway. they're serving your market. The, the, your market is starting to get served. Yeah. More. Is there Which a, is a good thing, but I want them to have, to serve our market as well as right, the super right. uber geeks, but we'll get into that. I was going to say, we're going to get into that. Yes, exactly. So, um, so Lauren, again, Excuse you me. picked our Urban Dictionary word of the week, and then I added to it. I did. So. I know. I just saw that there's two of them, which yeah, is I just crazy. Added one. We, um, one came up on Puke and the Gang last night. I was I was on Puke uh, and the Gang as a guest, so you should listen to that show. Oh, I'll definitely take a lo- listen. Yeah. Um. Well, mine. Uh, speaking of geeks, is uh, Dorkaler, which I think is like allure, like alluring. You are an Ooh. alluring person. Um, so it's not Dork Alert. No, allure. Allure kind of like would be A L U D O R K A L E R. Wouldn't it be A L L U R E? Well, wait, what's it? No, no, but that would be allure, like alluring. That's to A L L U R E, which is different. This is just A L E R. Right. E I E I O. Don't tell us what it is yet. Are you going to tell us? Oh, no. Uh, no. You got to let us guess. Well, okay. What do you want to tell us? No, no, you go ahead. Guess. You I won't give you any hints then. If We'll, we'll play hardcore. Let's go. <laughs> Dork I, alert. What does it Give mean? us a hint after our first guess. Dork. Um, uh, oh, dear. Like like something. Well, you kind of gave us a hint already. Like allure. Like it's alluring? Or like I'm gonna something go that's something appealing like, to dorks? Like spectacular? Like dork to the next level? Dorkular? Dork like in a good way? Like, that's yeah. dorkular? Dorkular? Like instead of that spectacular, that's dorkular. I'm saying it's something that's appealing to dorks. Like it's yeah, something, a, a trait yeah. that's appealing to dorks. We're probably both wrong. All right. okay. No, I think you're both on track. It's, um, and now this is Urban Dictionary. This is not not my own words, but a dorky person that is also sexy and alluring. Uh, oh, so um, it's like a dorkable. We were close. Yeah, I have a, a sentence. Dorkable. I like a dorkable myself. I but like that's a dorkable a, That's more, an adjective. Yeah. This is a noun. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. I There's a that. show called The Adorkable Anarchist, and I'm going to embarrass the guy because he's an adorable little twink. He really is adorable. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't listen to the show, I'm sure, anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, anyway, that's I, it made, <laughs> because of all the show prep with the, the gaming and the nerd culture, I, it made me think of that, so I, I threw it in there. But you have another one. Let's, let's move on. I see if I can. <clears throat> Homophobophobe. Have you heard this, Lauren? Is that? Oh, man. Mm. Is that the fear of being 
A homophobe? A homophobe? Homophobe? Yes, that's actually pretty oh darn close. Oh. That's that's kind of spot on. Or the fear of being perceived as a homophobe. So who on Puke and the Gang is a homophobophobe? I don't think any of them are. Or, no, but I mean, they don't, so they don't fear We were talking fear about it. All? We were talking about the subject of it. It came up on Puke and the Gang. And then someone mentioned the word, and I, and I kind of guessed it, too, because... It, it, basically, there was this story that someone wrote in about where they were being hit on really hard by someone who was mentally impaired Ooh. and apparently also oh. gay. And it was a very weird, awkward situation, obviously. Um, and they were, in fact, uh, they weren't gay, of course, the person who was writing about the story. And they were they felt this. Of course, they felt like I should be super polite because, first of all, this person's impaired. And also, it's like not wanting to be a homophobe about it. Yeah. But, but did they say, oh, by the way, I'm not gay? I don't know that it was. Because like, then you can play, you can like have the interaction and be cool with each other as long as you say, I am not. It was a mentally impaired person, so I'm not oh. sure it, may, it would have worked. It was, a, it was really a double whammy because on the one side, you don't want to seem mean to a mentally impaired person and then our mental, handi- mental handicap. I'm right? going to say something awful. What do you and, do when a retarded gay person hits on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they use you much stronger language on puke in the game. Do exactly Just what you would you, do with any other was, person. This was the most un PC show. I was uh, nice. getting a little. I was feeling a little like, wow, we're using bad words. I love uh, it. I, I love I'm, it. Uh, it. And I'm usually pretty. If they whip out an N word. They will have my like. <laughs> I'm dying. Worship. Which I swear. that gets into another story later. Oh. Which we'll talk about. Oh. But um. So anyway. Um. Yeah, it's funny to me, like, someone's afraid of being perceived as a homophobe, so maybe they're, like, way too permissive, like, someone's actually invading your your space bubble and making you uncomfortable, which they shouldn't do, that's, you know, you have to put your foot down, and that doesn't make you a homophobe, right? But if you're, if you're a homophobophobe, you're afraid to do that, because you don't want to be perceived as a homophobe. I think there's a similar thing with, with racial stuff, because it's interesting yeah. when you look at like a black person looking at you, you, sometimes the thought goes through my mind is like, how nice do I be? Do How much do I acknowledge this person and seem open and friendly without them thinking I'm just trying to make them think I'm not Wait. racist? It's really <laughs> obnoxious. Wait, you have to think That's about this? That's getting really meta. I mean, That's been... getting very meta. It's like, you're on the one hand, you're afraid of being perceived as a racist. Right. But you're also afraid of Wait, being perceived a as a person who's afraid of being perceived as Hold a racist. On. Well, what's, where's that line? <laughs> like, if I just act like an old person, like, because I have this thing where my eyes bounce around and, and check on people's trajectories. But if I do that and my eyes glance past a black person, like, I really don't care. I'm just, okay, they're going that direction. They're going that direction. I'm going to go this way. And I'm wondering every once in a while, I'm like, so do they think I just dismissed them? Or or do they, do they think you're that woman who's terrified of being raped? Right. I mean, is he thinking (laughs) run white woman? I'm coming. You know, I mean, it's like just to like, I mean, is that what he's thinking? Like, yeah, I'm coming out of you. Trust me, folks. Lauren has the jungle fever. No, I'm kidding. It's crazy. (laughs) He keeps calling me your name. I don't know why. Yeah, that's weird. Did I say Lauren. Lelania Lauren. It's of the it's L's. Very, it's I have too, like even my middle. Ellie, she's got extra L's in her name too. Yeah, and my, my middle name is an L, L word. One of these days you're gonna wake up and just be Orin because she's taking your L. That's fine. <laughs> I need four. Three isn't enough. I might take the A too because I got three of those. She should just be. It should just be Ren. It'll just be Ern. Ern. Yeah. Because I'll take the A and the L. Fine. <laughs> um. Them. Yes, Lauren. Wait, so people actually think about this? Is this a New Hampshire problem? I think it is. And I think this is a uh, serious racism problem in New Hampshire. To me, because see, I don't really see that as an issue. Okay, I'm married to a brown guy. And I get more looks from brown women and black women and Hispanic women. Like he took are they man. looking at you? I'm the evil white devil woman. Mm-hmm. And we get diddly from white people. They really just don't care. 90% well, see, and of the time. The perception and, is the opposite. The perception is right. that white guys are like, oh, you took our white woman. Oh, hell, they don't care. Right? There, there are all these racist white guys that are terrified. You know, if, you, if they see a white woman with a black guy or something. Um, I did have a talk with, I, went, I had a really good friend who I worked with back in uh, L.A., and we talked about a lot of these issues. And he, he was a black guy, and he would, uh, and, and, you know, he said that. Like, you, in the movies, you will see a, 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 black, a, white, a black woman with a white man, but not the other way around because society isn't accepting. Uh, hmm. We'll be back shortly. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. <That's> okay. <laughs> Mixer Monkey's learning the ropes. First day. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay tuned.
I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discuss LGBT topics from a liberty perspective what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap placard. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't know what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to put. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone too, you worthless Rat. I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia, and I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show you for you. Please, just click, click like and share. That's all we ask. What do you think? We are back, folks. Thank you for waiting patiently and listening to some messages from our sponsors. You're listening to LGBT Radio with crazy libertarian folks. And me. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, guys. We're going to discuss that today. Not today. No, I'm not prepared. I think we should catch you off guard and discuss it. No. What do you think? I mean, Liberty's cool. Uh, What are we discussing? Someone who's libertarian in every stance that you can think of and yet declares that she's not a libertarian. I'm not a libertarian, I swear. I want to hear her reasoning. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, but I have nothing. I have nothing to back that up. Hold Uh-oh. That. Exactly. <laughs> so it's an irrational. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> Wait, if that's an irrational stance, she might not be as libertarian as yeah, I think she is. Yeah, be rational. crazy. Libertarian? What if you're just emotionally libertarian and uh-huh. have to have a good reason for it? You just, it just feels right. Like, just feels like that's the way it's supposed to be. See, I can't to me, make the that's case still rational because a lot of people define rationality as being pure logic, and that's not what rationality means. I think rationality you... means having reasons for things right. that are reasonable and within your thought process is how your thought process is okay. I believe this because of this experience. Well, that's rational, not logical. Mm. It, logic and rationality it are almost, two different things. It almost describes like a capability to think. Like, so you, if you I'm can saying you couldn't necessarily you're, convince right. someone else of it. But your reasons for it are rational is what you're saying. Because my thought is, if it's rational, you should be able to persuade someone with your good reasoning. Mm, Yes and no. Um, Irrationality to me is having convictions that, A, you can't explain that make any sense to yourself or to somebody else. Okay. Like, pure emotional reactions aren't rational because you're not thinking. You're not tempering your emotional reaction with a reasoned idea of, okay, I have this emotion because of this response. Okay, now I understand where that emotion is coming from, and I understand I can either accept it or say, no, I'm not going to respond to that emotional mm. response. Okay. Like, like, so, flaming liberals, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to say this, but the people who really only respond with emotional, like, oh my gosh, there was a shooting, we must ban all guns. That's completely irrational, because it's just an emotional response, and they haven't tried to figure out what that emotional response means and then thought about what are the consequences of what this emotional response is trying to push me to do. Right. Does that make sense? And this discussion you guys are having is the exact reason why I've never really had to explain myself. I've never (laughs) had to say, oh, here's why. Because, like, as soon as I say, like, oh, I'm not a libertarian and I'm not rational, every, like, all the libertarians in the room start talking to each other, and then I can just sneak away slowly. (laughs) I'll just sneak out of the room. But I'm on camera here, so there's... You're now you're stuck. It. We're looking at you. Yeah. I, I'm I'm just going to declare that Lauren is a libertarian and we're going to move on. Yeah. I think she's a libertarian. <laughs> Maybe next week. And it's I interesting. Can, can <laughs> come up with a defense. So different and, libertarians. During the break, uh, one of our chat members says, as a member of the Fear of the Month Club, am I a phobophobe or am I a phobophiliac? That's a subscription that keeps on giving. <laughs> so this is someone who's got is just afraid of a lot of things. Is that it? I see when I heard when I heard our uh when I heard Hammer explain to it me, he he was he was repeating it and I heard fear of the muff. So I thought, well, this is just one of our gay listeners. <laughs> well, and I don't have a muff, a so I guess he's it. not scared of me. <laughs> I have is, a sweatshirt with a muff. Wait, what is a muff? Am I misunderstanding? What's a muff? If you hair on a girl. No, no, a muff oh. is a device that, well, you, there's that, that you put both oh. hands in. It's it's a it's a singular device and both hands can meet. There's no fabric oh, yes. separating the I love how Lauren the, is the so pockets. clean. It's a pocket. Her mind two is pockets so... that, that come together so that your flesh inside can we meet. We are on a gay podcast. It's okay to go <laughs> it's a sexual. A pocket where flesh can go inside and be comfortable. And and yeah. To, and yeah. Okay. It's warm and furry. Yeah. 
Right. It's a big, warm, furry hole. Do you want? I could. I can right, show gonna, mine to the camera right now. I, 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 I've allowed the my, mis- my misinterpretation of uh, of the word to be yeah. dragged out to <laughs> obscene proportions now. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what to call that. Maybe uh, a phobophobe or a phobophiliac. If you constantly got new phobias hmm. and it's like a fetish for you, you might be a phobophiliac. Is it really a phobia, though? Yeah, if you enjoy it, too. He's, he that... just pointed out to me he is not, in fact, afraid of Merkins. What is a merkin? Who is I have no idea what a merkin is. I thought is. a merkin was like oh, so a fake hair. Like you put, like if you don't have enough hair, it you is put actually a mer- you yes, put fake but it's for your there. genitals specifically. Right. It's a. It's, Why on earth would it's, you want it's that? It's fake hair. You put because for your you're genitals. Japanese and you have to hide your genitals because you're doing porn. Oh no, they've, they've made that enough, legal now. That's legal now. I don't know. A few years ago, they made that legal. I don't know yeah, about these Asian laws. people. Some of them have straight in Japanese. Yeah, in Japanese hentai, you weren't allowed to show pubes for a very, very, very long time. And then they changed that. And oh, you weren't, all wait, you weren't allowed to show pubes it, or genitals? Isn't that an pubes. animated thing? Oh. Hen, and hentai? Is that yes. the animated? So, so if they shave, would you allowed to show it? Yeah. It's depending on the real core. pube. I'm really confused. It's just a little... Then why like, would you put a merkin, which is p- fake pubes? I think that was how it was before when oh. you couldn't show. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Now, now I guess it's That's a fetish great, to have I, it. They, I've been seeing it, both in animated and in live action porn, if it's from Japan. They they blur out the genitals. Depends They're doing on the everything. Level, yeah, you can kind. Of, some of them it's just barely blurred, and you can pretty much still see everything. I've it's seen just blurry, but like full on in some anime and blurred in others, and and of course there's a lightsaber penis. Yes, that, those are I weird. think it depends on what their rating All of these is and where they are not mixing together the properly in my mind. Yes, uh, uh, yes, I've seen that too. I, I just try, I wonder maybe it's just a holdover from the culture. Maybe it's not illegal anymore, but they're just so. Yes, Lauren. What's a lightsaber penis? It's when the penis in the animation is literally nothing but a shaft of light. Because it's a censoring technique. Because they can't, because for whatever reason, they can't show it in that studio or for that rating or whatever they were doing. It would just be a big shaft of glowy light. <laughs> and it would go Wait. in and out of a slightly blurred muff. And yeah. <laughs> why is it um, Why is it glowing? It's better than a big it's, black it's bar. It's a form of censorship. Well, so, it's a it, form it's of censorship. the way they censor it out is just by putting bright white light there. And right. it's actually... Halo no and there's an aura and everything. You can't see the penis, you just see the glow of where the penis is. It's like so oh, weird. Yeah. Penis. They go to a great deal of effort to censor it properly. And great it's like and an it's like a, penis. yeah, like an angelic penis. Like with a halo over it. Well, oh. sometimes the girls have it too, so it's like great and wonderful penis in vagina. <laughs> and there's glow and and then there's splurping water everywhere. It's angelic sex. It's gross. Splurping it's, it's, water. It's very oh, pure. They and love lots of like Bodily fluids is a thing in hentai, which is the one thing I really hate about it. I'm like, oh, that's so nasty. It's, it's almost wet. a carryover of all the blood from mm. from anime. No, some guys are you, really into anime wet. Anime is like spewing blood. I've and, noticed a lot of guys are, they like to kiss wet and they like things to be sloppy and wet. And I don't no. like it at all. I knew There's, a guy like that. Gross. I dated a guy like that. Yeah. Body fluids. They're like, yeah. And the women are like, oh, hell no. Shower now. There's a difference between moisturized or lubricated and wet. Yeah, I know. It's like <laughs> there's guys who are like, oh, it's dripping down your leg. I'm like, that's disgusting. I really need yeah. to fix this because that's gross. <laughs> yeah. Well, so actually, baby doll well, penises. Uh-huh. What? Baby doll penises. That's they released a doll. Disturbing. With a penis. And they they, they just they just did. I it's mean, nothing new. Like we've all had them. Oh, we? wait, like well, a, like a baby, not penises, but like a doll for a child. Yes. that's got like a yeah, little like tiny baby, penis. a little baby penis. Oh, that's a little fine. tiny yeah. baby penis. Yeah. I was thinking like, I'm sorry, I'm totally on porn right now. I'm like, what? Why would you have a big hard penis on a baby? That's disgusting. It caused the, yeah, Japan, no, it that's caused an up. uproar. Yeah, it's messed up. Did, it caused an uproar. Why? Tiny little um, baby penis. It's like, okay, so back in like the 1970s, oh, that is this adorable. was normal. This was like a normal. <laughs> that's adorable. That is so cute. Uh, okay, that- I'm, I'm good. Thanks, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, baby penis. It is, it is kind of cute. I'm cool with the it. Baby, not the it, penis. It raised a, a, a ruckus. <laughs> Most things do. There was no warning right. on the box. So I have a few People things to say about People thought it was going to be a Ken doll baby. Oh, God. We are at it. We are. Uh, this segment is over. We will be back shortly with the next segment. So, folks, please stay tuned. Flaming, fl- Flaming Freedom will return. Hello, folks, and welcome back to Flaming Freedom. A merkin is a pubic wig. Merkins were originally worn by prostitutes after shaving their genitalia and are now used as decorative items, erotic devices, or in films by both men and women. The female version is usually made of fur 
beaver pelts, linen, or some soft version of cloth. Oh, dear God. While the male version is usually made of loops, chains, or metal. What? What? More, much more closely related to the cod piece. Now, okay, cod now, piece? Hammer, where was the rest like of this fish? fun stuff? Under the etymology or history? Okay. pelt of fur? According to the know. Oxford Companion to Mine the Body. nothing like that. The, the Merkin dates back to the 1450s. According to the publication, women would shave their pubic hair for personal hygiene and to combat pubic lice. They would then don a Merkin. Also, prostitutes would wear a Merkin to cover up signs of disease such as syphilis. Mm. I was just saying, you know, That's yeah. clever. fake pubic hair and syphilis, two great things that go great together. What I, I think know. is interesting is in the one hammer, let me read real quick. It said that in order to get men to still have sex with them, they had to don the Merkin. Why? Apparently, pubic hair was in. Yeah. Well, it, it, there's some nice pubic hair out there. Let's be, let's be real here. Right? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, no. I mean, the only reason mine just pissed me off one too many times. I'm a fan of no pubic hair. I love or it. Nothing little. gets stuck anywhere. It's wonderful. I think guys should trim their pubes. This oh my is God, my, yes. This is how I work it. Guys oh are, boy. most of the genitals are external, so it's, it's not quite as big a deal. Guys should trim their pubes and shave their junk. And their, I, and their, I fully and their agree. Balls. If you would like your balls gargled, shave them. <laughs> right. And then, and, and then put some commence. fresh balls on your balls so they don't stick to your thighs. Mm, fresh balls is a great way to do that. I don't want to gargle fresh balls. No, I know. And then... Uh, this, this is a very lovely scent and everything. It's just a powder. And then... It doesn't taste good. And maybe not. You know, maybe uh, not right before sex. Shower first. <laughs> and then uh, and I think women just shave everything. Yeah. Because everything's internal. So, I mean, uh, it's mostly uh, internal. So just shave everything. It's very delicate. I'm, I'm okay with, like, the trying. And, I think and a lot it's a, of it... It's an, it's an equivalent amount of work, I think. Because I, I think a woman yeah. can probably shave easier than a guy can shave his junk. Because everything's kind of a little bit smoother and easier to get to. Depends than, on the woman. Oh. Uh, it yeah, does. So, it really yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on on how those lips are for. Because some yeah. women have. That's why they have like the, I, the I rhinoplasty it, for the pussy. Is, yeah, I mean it's the same thing that the scrotum is made out of, right? Or the same sort of the same idea. Yeah, very delicate so skin. Very it's the sensitive. same. It's, it's like trying to shave your scrotum. You get better at it. Just be good. Just keep practicing, guys. You still have it, to it pull easier. it smooth in spots. Yes, it gets easier, guys. Just shave your scrotum and the base of your penis if you've got hair there, and then just trim your pubes with uh, clippers. Nothing worse than the than the tree line being too high. Yeah, exactly. All right, we should move on to something meaningful. Lauren, no, this is deeply meaningful. <laughs> Let's say. I mean, I'm, I'm also you seeing like, like where I fit in the world because, like, the- you know, as someone who doesn't like to have personal pubic hair but loves the little bit of pubic hair on another person okay. on, lady, on the ladies on the ladies, actually. Yes. Yeah. I'm okay with like that. There, that there- very well. I'm not well kept. Like, like I don't like high. the strap. Like keep it okay, high. Like, like, like a triangle. You triangle. Pluck your eyebrows. I like the triangle. <laughs> high up above the. Yeah, you like, you like straight it. edges. Yeah, but it's <laughs> like there, and it's well on women though. It's really soft sometimes. Yes. Sometimes. I mean, well, imagine what time of the month it is, wouldn't be as coarse. It wouldn't be as coarse. Yeah, it's very soft. It's, it's nice when it grows, which is very rarely because I hate it. There's one more thing about Merkins. It has been suggested that when male actors played female parts on stage, they would cover their genitals with a Merkin so they could pose as women in nude scenes. Clever. That would take a lot of hair. I, well, it depends on the guy, I guess. I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to know or, why are they showing their lower halves and not their upper halves? Because it'd be pretty obvious that they're dudes from the upper you half. You think? Uh, unless, unless they get fatter men with moobs. There's a lot of people who just don't understand gender out there, I've discovered. Like, people just mm. don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, mm. okay. that's what we're going to get into next, right? It is. Well, actually, no. We're, well, I guess we're done with the, the baby penises. I think so. Yeah. People Aww. got upset. Shocker. Yeah. Stupid. I mean, and they're like, goofy. They, those have been around forever, though. Like, since the 1950s. Well, I'm not that old. Babies but with penises? The 70s. Yeah. Oh. Ba- pe- right. Babies with genitals. Big yeah, surprise. I know there are babies that they're pee. You know, they actually have G.I. And they usually just pee out of a hole. There's nothing there but a hole or something. Yeah, which makes no sense. So I'm sure a little kid's, like, confused as hell. Yeah, that's a strange thing. This baby doesn't look anything like me. Yeah, they they make and it and it gives rise to the idea that they're going to grow something later, like that. Oh, I I, I know somebody who was basically all brothers, and her brothers had her convinced that she was going to grow one. Uh, her I kinda, mother was I kinda, very upset by I that. Kind of convinced my sister that. Oh, that is mean. <laughs> oh no. Well, it was it was humiliating like said, for her because when she went yeah. to school, she lined up behind the boys to go to the bathroom oh. because that's what she did at home. Because it was all oh. boys, and they were all older than she was, so she would be behind them. Yeah. And then, oh. and they made fun of her for it. And she's like, what? I'm going to grow one. And it was, oh, God, it was traumatizing. 
That is traumatizing. Oh, yeah, I actually, as a kid, pissed. I went into the wrong uh, changing room. So they're really oh, giving a girl yeah. penis envy yeah. there. She's actually well, going to develop penis envy because she thought she was going to grow one. She thought she was going to grow one. Yeah. I, I, I was. Uh, that reminds me. I, 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 was, yeah. I was thinking of mentioning this on the show. That like, what about birth envy? Do you think it, guy, there are guys who have birth envy? There are. There are men who have that. Is that like like they're called them they're called seahorses? They could give birth. Really, See, right. it's, a, it's a nickname. Well, it's birth. a nickname yeah. for them, but the, like, they like, wish that they were. I'm not sure capable. why they don't just call them the females. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but supposedly the female deposits eggs into a into a place in the male's body, like a kind of like a kangaroo. Well, it might not be a uterus. That's why. Kind of like a kangaroo, right? Yeah. And then he, he fertilizes them, and then they come out of him. Essentially, that he keeps them safe inside his body, and then they come out of him. So the males yes. actually give birth. Yes. Yeah. yeah talk about and, gender bending. Yeah. I think it's cool. It is pretty cool. It's yeah. fascinating all the different stuff that's out there. Mm-hmm. Like bed bugs have a hypodermic penis, Ugh. and they the just shove it anywhere. Have, the female has no hole for sex. They just okay. Get I'm stabbed done with this. With the yeah. stabbed with a hypodermic. Penis. So June. Uh, no, no, good. wait. Wait, oh God, that's, not weird. that's not the weirdest no! part. The males will stab other males, and their sperm will oftentimes work its way into to, to his genitals, and he and will impregnate another woman with the wrong with the other another sperm? male bug's sperm. Whoa! So it's actually Evil. homosexual reproduction, where they where it is actually it is actually like uh, an evolutionary advantage to bang other males. Wow. Yeah. Just bang everything, and you're, that's your best yeah, bet. Yeah, just stick it all. Just, just Something's stick it Everywhere you can possibly stick it, and eventually your genes will get passed on. And Yeah. So I'm <laughs> guessing these seahorses, Junior's their favorite movie. Oh, I still huh? haven't seen that. We should have a, <laughs> a, a Flaming Freedom host. You've feeling. seen Star Wars, right? Cause, I, I have, yes. Okay, good. The originals. The good ones. Oh, yeah. Not the new <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. No. And Indiana Jones. Of course. Okay. okay. We'll yeah. All Raiders right. of the Lost Ark, my favorite. I, All right. I like Temple of Doom. Eh. No counting the fourth one. It was scary. Not I was a little, I was a little frightened by it when it came out. Oh yeah, that was scared. That was uh, scary. that so was we're done one. with doll penises. Nice. Yes. So we were alluding earlier. Actually, you you brought up something that re- probably relates to this. It, uh, the question that we brought up is, what is a woman? Which is something I ask myself every day, and I don't know, quite frankly. Which is. Not the best situation to be in if you're a host of a podcast <laughs> you know, that talks about this, but I don't that's know. What I think I give you the to, derp to answer. Figure it out. Yeah, what is oh, it? Oh, XY, XX. XX is what you're a woman, or if you're XX, you're a guy, if you're XY. Well, what about the people who are XXY or Yeah, XYY, the world is perfect. Or what about the XYs who are androgen insensitive, which is an actual medical condition or, where your body does not respond to androgen? And they grow up completely female and, in fact, hyper-female in a lot of ways. Yeah. And then you're saying, no, no, that's not a woman. Are you kidding me? Well, they're XY? they're stuck in the idea that the world should be perfect, and it's not going to be. Yeah. And it's you have weird. to... See, these are the... These Wait, are why is the anyway. XY chromosome perfect? I don't understand. Well, the argument being... They're not if, so much perfect, but it's black and white. There's no... They, it they, was they, originally no created to be that way, but... The world isn't perfect. It's got a fatal flaw in it. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be that way. And you have to respect that we're not perfect. That's why we live under grace and not the law. If you read your Bible. But most of them don't. (laughs) Oh, right. We live under grace. I forgot. Most of them do not. Oh, Auntie Grace. Yeah, I feel like this show. I feel like we should change the name of the show. I mean, not because of that. I was thinking this before you said that, but I was thinking we should change the name of the show to "But I Digress" (laughs) because we talked about Merkins, doll penises. Well, doll penises was on the show, Brett. But what else did we? Yeah. Anyway, we're going to talk about later to digress more. Uh, We'll we'll digress some more, folks. If you stay tuned, we'll be uh, we'll be back shortly with more Fleming Freedom. Let me talk first. <laughs> the music's playing. I'll We're fight back. you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but we digress. Well, I don't know when he turns them off. <laughs> well, when the music's playing, it's then you got to stop talking. Oh. <laughs> this is your host, Dale. And Lauren. And the idiot. No, 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 no. not an no, idiot no. at all. <laughs> well, when the movie we're, not, we're not that. We're really not that formal. It's okay. No, it's quite, quite all right. Uh, this is flaming freedom, where we, where libertarian folks shoot the poop, including Lauren, who is also a libertarian. I declare. Yes, I do poop, and, Dale. Yes. She, she's a closet libertarian. <laughs> I'm not a liber... Whatever. Total closet. She just I just live in New Hampshire, and then the a bunch of libertarians came up, and they were like, what's up? And I was like, you guys are cool. 
Because yeah. you're a libertarian. Yeah. Oh. That's why you think we're cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but carry on with it. Next, Tell next us more. episode. Next week. What does we'll, it mean we'll to be a woman? How do you though? feel about laws? What does we it mean talked about the derp reason, and the derp reason is not the reason. So. Well, there's a, uh, a a post I read on Twitter from the other night, uh, maybe two days ago, one day ago. I'm not sure. Oh, no, it was last night, I think. Um, and it says, or it's by Renard, R-E-N-A-R-D, women. We're basically all just vaginas with vestigial bits and arms and legs and brains attached. <laughs> okay. Because I think that that's what a lot of uh, what are called trans exclusionary radical feminists might believe. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, that womanhood is based on the genitals. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, a, a lot discussion. of people, not just the group you described, but those two, those especially. Yeah. Yes. The, the group that I'm describing, uh, which. It, once again, trans exclusionary radical feminists. It's a bit of a mouthful, and if you compress it down, <laughs> isn't you... that a little redundant though? Well, no, whoa, because not all whoa. feminists hate yeah, men. Yeah, you can but be a radical feminist a and love trans women. Well, I guess Trust th- there's a, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of variations I've on feminist hatred, but right, there, there's no, certain no. <laughs> just man hating women. It's like no, if yeah. you've ever had a penis your entire life or even close to a penis, we hate you. You're the problem. Yeah, serious misandry, if you ask me. What if there's a woman who has a really large clitoris? There are that actually, happens. Yeah, yeah there yeah. are. They're 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 described as as it's it's a misnomer, but they're described as hermaphrodites, and they're not. They're just women that have what essentially looks like a penis. If they I have mean, an any out, if, and if, they if the clitoris identify develops as a enough, it looks like a, it, it it will look like completely like a penis, and they can oh, oftentimes wow. get erections and all that stuff. That is cool. The more you know. <laughs> are they girly? So yeah, yeah, most yeah. Of no, yeah. most of the yeah. yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. very very feminine. But just large, you know, things. Large hanging, in that one way. There. That's that's pretty awesome, actually. So <laughs> recently, uh, very recently, actually, uh, an article came out. And you, you actually are the one that posted this to the website. Um, it's an article by Michelle Goldberg. It's entitled, What is a Woman? And it's a, a discussion about um, this very topic that we're talking about, trans-exclusionary radical feminists. And... So it, it actually cites one very specific um, meeting of, of people to kind of discuss these issues. And there's a lot going on. I, I don't even know where to begin, really, at this point. Um, mm. I spend a well, lot of time. Do you want to read some excerpts from the article? Possibly? Yeah, yeah, we could definitely do that. Um, but for me, I spend a lot of time on, on Twitter. And I, there's just a lot of like back and forth hatred and even some. And th- there's actually an excerpt, and I can't find it right now, but about how a lot of people have received death threats even it's there's like a lot of it, this really rocks people or shakes yeah, the, them well, up there was a men's it's, rights conference in detroit recently yeah. and the hotel canceled would oh, not yeah. let them have it there there's yeah. all this people, a lot of people have this misunderstanding they were like oh they're just acting like there's they're just claiming that there's these threats were made and so they can make drama and like, oh, no, no, I no the hotel it. got them the hotel was the one and they canceled they pulled the event, and the, the, the event had to be rearranged and reorganized at the last minute oh, because yeah. of death it. threats. Uh, that, that, that to the point where the hotel was like, "We're not going to let you have it here unless you spend however many thousands of dollars on on security and things like that." So then they raised the money, and they still just ultimately said no. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, it's it is it gets pretty ridiculous. And then if people go and if if if, if a men's rights activist, for instance, goes to a college that's been organized and there's a college group sponsoring it and all that stuff, they have had fire alarms pulled. They've had all sorts of things happen just to silence them. Like yep. sil- which to me and my thought is if someone is going to say something really stupid, let them talk. The only people you want to silence are someone that you're afraid people are going to listen to and that they're going to make sense. <laughs> and you don't well. have a, you don't have an argument for it. it a, a, Counter the argument. Don't don't try to censor them. Well, for a lot of these women, it's you know men have had the ability to talk for so long. We won't. We aren't going to let them talk anymore. Yeah. And it's like that's not fixing anything. Yeah. If anything, you're a male morons. feminist, if you're a male feminist and you try to be supportive, you can often get attacked. Oh yeah. Because you know, sit down and shut up. Well, there's <laughs> just <had> <laughs> so much hatred in some some people, and you have to wonder what was done to them early in life to have that kind of hatred. Yeah. For. Somebody. Yeah, I think people carry a lot of baggage forward oh, yeah. into their politics we all do. and things like that. Every yeah. last one of us does on some level. We all got issues. Sorry. Well, you know, if you feel like you're being oppressed and you're not being allowed to speak as a woman, 
and somebody comes along who's who you think might not be really be a woman or even the male male feminists who identify as male and who have penises probably yeah, i'm talking about mainly like cisgendered men who are male, yeah male cisgendered men. Yeah, i mean not necessarily but um so when that comes along you, that that's taking the voice away from you and if you're someone who's struggled with that and that and that's part of why you do what you do is to have that voice you're just going to be um really trying to 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 take that back and so it's it's been pretty wild. I've I actually almost thought about closing down my Twitter account, but because I'm on the show, I figured you know I just I'd stick with it. But I I just hear so many like violent remarks. Milk the drama oh. for the show. <laughs> yeah, well then yeah then I thought about that last night. I was like, oh well. This is my this is where I get it all out because I hate drama. Oh, this God, show is the it. only time I deal with drama. Like to cut for two hours a week, and then I am done. I don't look at Facebook. I don't you know. To cut right to the issue, like, I want to be, like, the third party in this fight, this battle that's going on online or mm. in other places, You, always, you want to be that in a lot of things. You're, in a, well, a, you're an, a mediator at heart, uh, I think. I feel like you're I don't necessarily major. know that I want... Well, I mean, I, I, I always want to promote peace, but yes. I want to also um, just show that there's another way. I want to say, hey, guys, it's okay. You can believe this. You can believe that women are... What was it I said? Essentially, vaginas with other stuff attached to them, like a brain, and you know. Um, <laughs> that sounds pretty fine. misogynist. Like, like if that's how you no, feel about is. women, yeah. then you yeah. are a misogynist. Now, I, I am a, I'm actually, I do not believe in any sort of endemic, widespread misogyny as like a cultural problem. But there are misogynists out there, oh, no yeah. doubt. Right. I mean, I, I don't feel like it's a. I don't feel like it's some kind of epidemic the way a feminist would. Not anymore. I do I, think, I think there are gender that's gone away. equality issues. But I, it comes I, from a lack of I, understanding, yeah. a lack of thoughtfulness, a lack of, you know, knowing someone who's a, who's a woman who you've had a great relationship with. Well, sometimes it's just possibly. insidious, un, like uh, subconscious. I mean, to look at misandry for a little bit, like you watch that doesn't sitcoms. Exist. Oh, no, of course not. But you watch sitcoms and you've got this idea that you've got these good looking, intelligent females with these dumb, fat slob husbands. That's a form of misandry. Who don't appreciate their wives. And right. Yeah. And, and but feminists see it the opposite way where, well, but you've got this fat, ugly guy and this woman can obviously do better. But the fat guy obviously has to have like a hot, skinny women. And they're right. You've got both of them packed into a single show depending on how you look at it, and it's all there's, subconscious. There's a certain element in comedy where you have the straight, they call it the straight guy, and then I don't know what the other term, the other one's called, but there's one who's funny. Yeah. And usually they're like uh, the derpy, uh, saying ridiculous things, uh, and, and, and maybe a slob and, something, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And they're the funny one, and then you have the straight guy that they play, the, the straight guy plays off of, or they play off of the straight guy, rather. You right. have to have someone who is, represents sort of reason and sense, and... And, po and pokes fun at, and, and points out when the crazy person is being ridiculous. And then that's what's, that's the, there in comedy lies or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, but there's this trend that the guy, the woman is always the straight guy, so to speak. Yep. In well, the, she's in the in killjoy. Yeah. <laughs> from, uh, you know, oh crap, I forgot the word, misogynist point of view. Women are the ones uh, who come in and, well, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you have to use the right towels, da 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 da. Oh, you get married and then suddenly you're not, no, life isn't fun anymore. <laughs> so you seriously get both and it's really interesting to watch and see who takes what side culturally and is it really a cultural phenomenon or is it an individual thing depending on the person and how they see mm. it hmm. are, are you talking about like gender differences how much of it is cultural or how much is it that just the whole the idea just the whole thing nurture. because if you listen to feminists the entire country is completely misogynist right right but if you look at it from the other side you can see the entire thing is being completely misandrous there's but both, I don't, really. Uh, there's in, in both, and I don't... In different contexts. Right. I don't think there's a... Yeah, like I, not like, anymore. There isn't that overarching and it, There's also Western world, for instance, versus like third world countries. Because if you look at worldwide, yeah. misogyny really is rampant. Yes. But, but, but in, in like first world countries, it's... It's kind, kind of evened of, out, really. Yeah, it's getting a little more... Reason, eh. um, which is to say there aren't gender issues. There are. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, it, it's, I think it's, it's complicated, and we'll get back to it when we come back. Blaming freedom... LGBT libertarians shooting the poop. Stay tuned. We are already back. Woo! That, that was our longest break. 
And uh, so, so those of you who, who patiently waited through that break and listened to our sponsors, thank you, sponsors, for making the show possible. And if you watch the camera. Like, I get any money from that. I don't, okay. but... Well, it does support our net, you know, help yeah. support the network who is allowing us to be yeah, no, we out get, to you. So. We're, it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> it's mutual beneficial yeah. thing. So In an indirect way, we are benefiting from the yeah. sponsors. So thank you for sticking around and listening. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was our longest break. The rest will be shorter. And if you were watching the cameras, you could see us all like waving our hands and being like, rrr, rrr. like yeah. you missed a really angry conversation. We're missing the conversation. We're very we're a long, we actually had an involved conversation yeah. about gender differences and misogyny and misandry mm-hmm. and yeah. where it Chivalry. all comes from and why it happens and what it means. And Lauren was getting annoyed so, because guys kept wanting to help her. So well, strange earlier, overly chivalrous. Well, yeah, I was, I was talking about how I was changing a tire once and there were these people coming up to me being like, Hey, let me give you a hand with that. Oh, hey, honey, let me let me jack that up for you. I'm like, no, well, thank you. I, if, if I had to sum up my point, property, if I had to sum up my point, I just want people to understand that sometimes that's coming from. It was coming sometimes from it's a coming very from good a place. Point, a they, condescension I, that you can't, you're incapable of that. But a lot of times, I think for a lot of guys, they understand now women are capable of everything they're capable of, but they still think that that chore is beneath women. That yeah. women are not supposed to have to do that. It's almost a kind of royalty. It's like uh, you know. The notion of putting someone up on a pedestal. And that's an issue if you don't like that. Like, you didn't like yeah. it. And, and, well, and it's I an just, issue. But, but, let's, but some, let's call it what it is. And sometimes it's just overly chivalrous, this sort of notion that I'm supposed to do that for you. You're not supposed to have to do it. Yeah, they were probably you're raised that way. Of it, but you're not supposed to have to do it. Your mother does these chores, but your mother never should do these chores. Yeah. And mm. then you're, you know... That's Sorry, what you think anyway. being male is. But once again, we digress. Anyway, I, yeah, I was just pointing out <laughs> the flaming <fact> digressions. <laughs> the flame, <laughs> we should change the thing. Um, I've changed tires in a, in a suit before, and I haven't gotten any help. That's all I was trying to get at. Is like oh, it felt weird because right, like right. suddenly oh, everyone no, wants to help, help, and I'm like, guy. you're supposed to do what? that yourself. Anyway, and if you don't, then you know, gender you're not, presentation you're not a, you're is not a funny a, thing. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of gender and presentation, and uh, so there's actually a quote here, and it kind of. I like it because it gives the sentiments of of what a, a trans exclusionary radical feminist would uh, would say. Um, it's actually a pretty old quote quote from uh, Robin Morgan back in 1973 at the West Coast Lesbian Conference. Um, and it, I don't think at the time, like certainly no one would call themselves a trans exclusionary radical feminist, especially because transgender ideas and topics are so prevalent these days. It's it's. You'd really kind of look silly if you if you actually called yourself that, right? But it's a it's a very hate directed term, and maybe I shouldn't be. Oh, using they it soften myself. their terminology, but while still wanting to be exclusionary towards trans women, I, I see yes, that a lot. Like yes. they say, women born women, and women with a Y yeah. instead of an E. Yep, yep. And they say women only women born women are. are and welcome maybe that's at the coming Michigan from a good place. Maybe they're trying to just make a distinction because there's there's differences, there's diversity, and we should recognize that. If but there's a lot of people who just don't want to talk about it. And those women, the ones that don't want to talk about it, we need to respect that, too, I think. Don't want to talk about About what? being trans. They don't want to, they want to be, like, the term is stealth, or they, oh. they just don't want it to come up. They don't want, you they mean, don't want to you mean they it. don't want to be separate Even just but now, equal? Like, uh, talking about, no, no they me, don't, they don't want to talk about, talking about changing, having to have lived as a yeah. male at any point. I didn't want to talk about of changing course. attire in the before time. Of course, they want to get on with their lives. It, I think that's completely a normal, reasonable thing that any person wants to do. Well, it makes sense. And the other thing is, here's, yeah. here's the thing, though. Do, you know, you, I, I, I think a lot of trans women are just like, look, I'm just a woman. I don't want, I don't want to be in a separate category. Right. I don't want to be separate but equal. Well, is, that that, a, is that an unreasonable desire? I don't think so. Well, there's that, and, and there's the idea that it's kind of traumatic to be forced to live as something you are not for a long period of time, and then peop, everybody wants to talk about that time in your life. It's oh, like right. asking a rape victim over and over about their rape. Like, no, that was right. a traumatic well, what experience was your name in my life. Before? Oh, what, I don't want to talk you, do about that. Pictures? Oh, that's do you have pictures worst. of you from before? Yeah, well, and like, you don't understand. Um, I that that was That was a trauma for me, that part of my right. life, to some extent or another, depending on the person, but... Yeah, that was a trauma, and you're asking dramatic. me to relive that. You're you're asking me to dwell in this part of my life that I have uh, uh, dealt with yeah. somewhat effectively, hopefully, and moved on. And now you're asking me to relive it. So I, I completely understand. And some that. people get kind of upset when you say like, "I don't want to think about that person," as if to say like, "There's a that's a separate person or whatever." But yeah. ultimately, it's it's the same you. However. And Not people a you get you liked right. People get sad. They're like, well, I have, "You hated yourself." Well, no, I didn't yeah. hate myself. I hated the trauma that I experienced as my 
as and me the person doing society that. was forcing yeah, me that's to be. what it's about and a lot of people well, I mean, get they, really upset that they think they there's might. a lot of self-hatred and maybe there mm-hmm. is in some cases but what it is is a hatred of the trauma right that you experience it's not I've about heard, your, i've heard yeah. people say that they look at old pictures as when they were presenting differently mm-hmm. and they do feel like it they they say I, I have the memories of that but it feels like it was another person that was happening to yeah, another yeah. life no it totally does it feels like like that was someone else, and I just I know what they went through, and it, but it was a, it feels like a different person. Yeah, yeah. Is that? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it's like look at that, isn't that crazy? It, it is. It blows it, right? my mind a little bit. It blows my mind a little oh, bit. Oh man. And, um. Anyway, so this is getting a little personal. Do, I, see, I would never but, ask to. Uh, yeah, you always wait yeah. first, yeah. or you can, and because sometimes people are just curious. Or people ask you about your your junk. Yeah, it, which, and, you and, don't ask anyone else about their junk. If someone asks you about your junk. Ask them how big their penis is. It really depends on how that <laughs> question is broached. If you have somebody that is very honestly, like, understandably curious, you have to preface that with either getting to know that person that you want to ask that question to or simply asking them, can I ask you a very personal question or are you going to be uncomfortable with that? Because I have some questions, but if the you're not comfortable, thing, I'm fine with thing that too. too. Is you can talk, I, here's what I suggested be to some, polite. some trans people I know online. is If someone brings that up, Maybe if you're okay with it, and a lot of them were when I described this, yeah. describe it in generalities without getting about your personal. Like, here's some options for surgery that some people do, yeah. and some people do not do it. And, and, and I, and, but I'm not going to talk about my personal choices because that's uh, personal. But here are some general things, and if you want to know more about it, here are some resources online. You can go find out about it. And that's what's so annoying yeah. about it is that there are all these resources online, uh, and everybody knows this. You can Google and instantly find answers to things. It, this I is thought, something I'm yeah. starting to become aware of is that we are trivia is becoming less trivial in a way because it's so we can get answers so fast if we want to know something online without we don't. And, and some, people get annoyed now if you ask them a question that you can Google that and find out instantly. Why do you have to bug me with it? Yeah, Sean did that. To you me know, <laughs> and, uh, and that's why there's that white that website exists. that says, let me Google that for you. Yeah. And then it, it has an animation of typing in the thing that they asked. And then it opens up and then it actually Googles it and takes you to the Google page. So it's, it's a way, it's, it's a very condescending way to say, this is a very easy answer to get. Why are you bought? Why well, are you asking then, me these deep personal questions I mean, when you can find the answer that easily? Yeah. Even outside of that, there are trans people of both directions that are completely open to it and have stuff on YouTube about it. And they're very open about it and they right. talk about it and you can see the whole thing. You don't they need have to chosen ask that to be person. activists. Not every trans person wants to be exactly. an activist, and they shouldn't have to be an activist. If you're that curious, go find out from one of these people who is very comfortable with it and is open to ask, answering questions. Like I just saw a news article yesterday about. Um, oh, she was. That's where I learn a lot of things is from watching YouTube channels no, of trans was, people okay, who have decided they want to be open about it right. and talk about their yeah. experience. Like for me, me for example, I'm on this yeah. show, and you can write in and talk right. to me about whatever you want to talk about, and that's fine. But that's because I'm You've open chosen that and I'm path. here and I'm right. very publicly viewable. Yeah. I mean, there was a news article yesterday about uh, male. I know he's male now. Okay. Th- I get these. A backwards. female to male. A trans- female to male. Sexual. And no, he's straight. He, no, no, he no. Transsexual is. Uh, tra- oh, yeah. She, he's transitioning he's, from she he's to transgender. He. Yeah, transgender is a is a good all encompassing term. Yeah. I actually don't even use the term gen- transgender for myself, but mm. we'll talk about that. He is transitioning next episode, and the whole conversation was about well, he's going to have a tattooed penis because the arm they're going to take the skin from has tattoos on it. I'm like, wow, that's open. <laughs> Whoa, okie dokie yeah. then. Like, I didn't need to know that. That's something for you and your fiance to handle. <laughs> so they're out there. You yeah. know, if you really want to know, find somebody who's already sharing because there are lots of sharers yeah. go on youtube well, and, and, there, go on it, youtube and, and look up trans man or ftm or whatever you'll find but out at the lot, same time I, straight people or not straight people but oh no i know you already, don't have to immediately right? stop no. talking we do have 30 seconds no i know well th- but <laughs> I, like I there's, so, there's not just one option though it's not like you go google this thing and you're like oh well they have the surgery that removes the genitals and then reconstructs them no there's multiple surgeries there's, mo- oh, there's yes, a lot exactly. there's very di- it's a very there diverse are a lot thing. of choices and people pick um, different ones and they're all equally valid and i will share my choice about uh, fem- flaming, uh tr- feminism when we come back flaming freedom will return stay tuned
Hello, folks, and welcome back to Flaming Freedom. Welcome. And thank you for being here instead of going to church and being all blasphemous. But if you'd like to go to church, you're certainly <laughs> welcome to, because there's some cool churches out there. Yeah, yeah. I right? never found Maybe. one I like. I never did either, yeah. but I, yeah. I've i heard rumors that they're out there. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Cool. It's in theory. Yeah. It's tough. I, I don't want to go to church. I, so. I never did. I never wanted to go to church as a kid either. So, yeah. <laughs> the Church of Flaming I would tell Freedom. Mom, oh, we're going to watch church on TV. I would turn on TV. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Somebody that's just all preaches that was at you. on on Sunday morning. Everything was just church, 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 church. <sighs> yeah. So, anyway. Ni- so, 1973, Los Angeles. And it's the West Coast Lesbian Conference, which sounds kind of cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> sounds good so far. I know. It's the 70s. It's probably like great music. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, they, they had a performance by all kinds of like folk folk singers. And yeah, and I had the sense of there of there being an ominous cloud of pot smoke. Oh, I don't know. No, well, that was wait, that. I'm sure an ominous cloud. Oh, of of, of trans of hatred. Well, yeah, yeah. It know. was not necessarily mm-hmm. like always like trans hatred, but also just uh, exclusion of men from the feminist movement. And right, um, there's a quote here from Robin Morgan, who was a keynote speaker at the time. And I don't know, obviously, her position now if she's changed since the 70s, but. She says, I will not call a man she. 32 years of suffering in an androcentric society and surviving have earned me the title woman. One walk down the street by a, by, oh, by a male transvestite. I don't have my glasses on. Sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, by a male transvestite, five minutes as be, of being hassled, which he may enjoy, which is kind of weird to think oh, that God. someone would enjoy being hassled or like trying to get attention. Like that's why you're trans, transsexual. It's, it's so presumptuous, no. too. Oh, um, my God. And then he dares, he dares to think he understands our pain. No, in our mother's names and in our own, we must not call him sister. So like, this is, this is, explains this, I'm sorry, but this is a, uh, this is a case, I think of, of feminists completely blowing their, their oppression out of just to ridiculous proportions. Yes, there is oppression of of women, even in first world countries. And, uh, it, it is, but for her, for instance, to act as if cisgendered women are way worse off than and than trans women is just spectacularly whiny and pathetic. I, I'm sorry, you don't have a notion of crap. Oh, to it's deal hypocritical. With. It's it's hypocrisy well, of the highest form. To, none of us do. Well, you have can't. That. You have to validate other people's pain. I I yeah. I hate the whole one-upmanship. Right. The victim I, I've been completely. Yes. I've yes. been guilty comp- of doing this. <laughs> I will admit, and and I am a horrible person for doing it, but yeah, you you can't just brush off other people. We've all had to deal with some shit somewhere in our lives, right? And you've got to validate that. You can't yeah. just be like, oh well, yours doesn't matter. Your feelings aren't relevant. Well, and there is there is relative differences. For instance, I have been one of the first people. I think I think I've been pretty good about acknowledging the progress that LGB folks have made, particularly L and G. A little bit less so B, but that's coming along. Lesbian, gay, bisexual. Lesbian, yeah. gay, and bisexual. Thank you. We've made incredible progress. We have to acknowledge that. Oh, amazing. Things are not in as very bad as they were. But people who are in a movement or doing political activism and things like that, and I understand this, victims are a resource. And yeah. you have to cultivate that resource to a certain extent. To some extent, the individual becomes uh, subservient to the movement, to mm-hmm. the collective. And well, there's a loss you, of power. If, yeah. if things are fixed, you have the to power convince people that it's much worse than it, it than it, it really is. Yeah. If necessary, if that's what gets you funding, oh. if that's what gets attention to your movement, this happens in and any movement power. to some extent. It has happened in spades with women's equality, which is a real issue that deserves attention. But feminists are, have got they, they, their voices have uh, a lot of them have gotten to this level, this high pitched level of insanity that has caused people to. To turn. Oh, that's yeah. why you have like pound sign women against feminism or hashtag women against feminism. It's exploded recently. People are just fed up with it because it's gotten ridiculous. And this is an example of it. This woman, this cisgender woman saying that how dare trans women who she's not acknowledging as women, she's calling them men. Yeah. Which pisses me off. Uh, and they have it so much worse off than her. I mean, in the victim competition, you have lost woman. You've lost the victim competition to trans people. I'm sorry, but it is stupid, the victim competitions. Just acknowledge that we all have these issues. And and, and that's what I'm saying is LGB folks have made tremendous progress. Trans people, I feel like, are sort of, it's it's their time now. It's It's getting better. And not that it wasn't their time before, don't get me wrong. It has nothing to do with what you were 
what you were deserving of. We're all deserving of the same rights and being treated with respect, regardless of any of this bullshit. But it's their time now in the sense that I feel like society is ready to right. tackle this. Right, it's a practicality this. Yes, we're, we're, angle Society is ready to start justification re- angle. listening and trying to understand and work on these issues. Now mm. that they've kind of dealt with LGB and we've come so far, they're getting more comfortable with gender issues in general. Yeah, yeah. Right? now that we've beaten the, that into them. But the very point of this article was to say that that sentiment from 1973... Well, you know, f- more than forty years ago, is still lingering into the oh, it, oh, it absolutely people. is. It is. But back down to what you were language. saying about about how you know you're always trying to one up someone else in like, oh look, I'm more impressed than you. No, I'm more impressed. Uh, not impressed. impressed yeah. I, I'm usually the one that's impressed by things. <laughs> I guess it, it doesn't take much to impress me. Um, so there's that constant battle, but that's because the most painful pain that a person can feel is their own. Oh yeah. So obviously you're going to put yourself first and. Well, it and takes, that's normal and it, healthy. It's a very I, I, healthy, normal thing. Yeah. And but I think, it takes compassion to look at somebody else and go, yeah, I've got my issues, yes. but I understand you have yours as well. Right. And, and that's it takes a I mean, it took me years to get to the point where it's like, no, don't belittle what you've gone through. That was traumatic to you. And it doesn't matter if what I went through or somebody else went through was worse or less worse. Hmm. Yours is valid. Yep. Your feelings hmm. are valid. You are a person who is allowed to be hurt and upset hmm. by something. And that empathy is exactly what... Uh, and I don't consider myself well, empathic. What, the, 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 oh, oh, go ahead. The empathy that, that you're describing there is actually the very foundation or the, the solid foundation for building coalitions to actually overcome this hardship and this pain and suffering and, and to educate people and to really grow as a species, not just as an individual. Um, and if you want to look at coalition building from another perspective, not just the empathetic perspective, which is the one that will really make the movement, if there is a movement, strong... Um, but also just from a funding standpoint, like if you're going to exclude people from your movement, you're going to exclude their their wealth. You're yeah. going to exclude not just their their, their, and their ideas sympathy. and their feelings. Whatever their assistance and participation yeah. might yeah. have helped there's provide. A, there's a well, there's major that, resource there's that, that you're There's that other double squashing. standard that feminists do, right? Which is that proclaiming that men have all the power and have always had all the power, which I have my issues with. I don't agree with that. And then saying that so only men can solve their problems because they have all the power. Ugh. And then demanding that men sit down and shut up at like feminist events and things like that. Mm. Uh, I, I, there's a, there's, um, it, I mean, well, it's really just incredibly hypocritical, right? You've been making us sit down and shut up all this time. So now you sit down and shut up. Like, well, it's <laughs> trying to fix the problem. Like it, by I'm re- justified by in abusing you person. now. I'm yeah. justified in abusing you now because you abused me when he didn't. When he didn't. You're talking about the collective, you're talking about men in a collective fashion. And you're now being abusive of an individual who is there to help, who is agreeing with you. And that's not enough. It's not enough. Right. Because he's he is he's got a penis and he's like all the other men. You're, it's 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 something you're, you would not be allowed to do with most any other group. But if it's a especially if they're white, male, heterosexual, especially they're now they deserve whatever happens to them. It doesn't matter because they because they did all this stuff. It doesn't matter if they're actually a feminist and a volunteer and giving their money and there to support you. <laughs> They're still part of that collective. Mm. This is Flaming Freedom. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. We are the LGBT libertarians shooting the poop. This is your host, Dale. And Hammer. And Elena. And uh, it's funny, I kind of don't remember to do that when I'm not in the hot seat. When I'm, I'm the mixer monkey now, and Hammer is actually... Uh, going to have the opportunity to share his thoughts which is good because we're going to get into some subjects of particular interest as a, a big table full of geeks now like all of us a bunch of geeks oh yeah most of our right. D party here now right exactly we we play D D every week been a uh, hammer and i take turns running i run a game he runs a game we alternate and uh, we play pathfinder which is for those of you who are not really into all this stuff. It's it's a variation on Dungeons and Dragons. It's just a different kind of a brand and uh, with some changes. But it's basically Dungeons and Dragons. It's tabletop role-playing games. I've been a fan of them since high school, which is a very long time. We won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one topic of interest is that there is a trans character now in one of the books that Pathfinder actually introduced a trans dwarf. Right? Does that yes. sound right, Hammer? Correct. It's a... a- Born a male dwarf and 
ended and as transition. a female. Okay. okay. And presents as female. Which is pretty cool. I wonder, do they have any, is there any magic involved or something to present more um, as a male? Or? I didn't see any details on exactly if it was actually like some sort of transition or just refers to as a female now. Yeah, simply presenting as female is enough. Or, uh, you know, and, and in fact, in, in modern times, a lot of trans people just present differently. And that's uh, their choices that they made even though it's so much easier in D, &D there's there's magic rings and magic belts and let's see if i can show a picture of this trans character uh i think i can kind of do this heck my character already has the the female to male necklace the ring or... <laughs> there's a... i think it's a choker oh yeah in it Dale's a game, choker. it's a choker yeah there's it's a pink like choker Oh wait, what is it? What are you talking about? The bingo like choker. Oh, there's a there's a there's a neck or choker, necklace choker yeah. that uh allows the person wearing it to turn into a specific person who happens to be a, a man. And My it just female, physically so. alters you. Your mind is stays the same and everything, but you're just physically and your character l took it and oh, yeah. and no one fought you for it. They oh, were hell fine. No. And it allows you to turn into this particular dude who looks like Tom Daly. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you, you you brought it up uh, a week or two ago about that. Uh, did the, I? the very first thing that we discussed after I got that was like, so if I have sex with a girl, can I knock her up? Right. You guys haven't. <laughs> you, you you guys are trying to figure that out, which yeah. is interesting. I wonder how far you'll go to figure that out. <laughs> well, I think I would. Your character's bi, right? Oh yeah. And uh, she she's totally she's fine got, with having sex as a guy. She's a slutty bi. Yeah. Yeah. So, Unfortunately, the stereotype, but what can I do? I think it's great. The cool thing about role-playing games is it's an excellent opportunity to explore all kinds of notions about gender and yeah. things like that. Because I'm have been not doing a slutty for... guy in real life, so that's kind of a fun thing to do. Yeah, an older edition of D&D &D has a magic item that if you put it on, it will turn, change your gender, and, and then it's gone, and then it's no longer useful, right? It just changes you, and then you're stuck that way. Well, it's a cursed item, supposedly. Right. Yeah. And Which, then, but there are plenty of there are plenty of people who do not see it as such. I know it's like I want that cursed item so much. Right. There's people who want that item in real life. Like, give me that item, I'm gonna put it on. There you go. So yeah, but, it's interesting. Uh, I think it's uh, kind of nice that Paizo decided they they had characters for most of the other genders, so they wanted to do a transgender character. Um, and it's going to be in the role playing game, and the card game that they also produce will have this character. That's pretty cool. Oh, okay. Um, and the card game is pretty popular right now. Okay. People that play board games and card games. Well, one of the things I like about D and D is it's always had the flexibility to be able to be, to just go ahead and roll up a transgender character if that's what you want. Well, it, it really it's depends on your yeah. It really depends on your group. Um, I think our group right now is quite interesting because I'm the only cis male in the group, which is kind of yeah. Uh, I'm a cis male. You mean you're only well, straight male? Straight male. Cis straight only straight male. Yes. Oh, I'm a cis male, but not straight male. That What's just that? Means oh, okay. I'm cis I'm getting that wrong. This means not uh, trans. Yeah. Oh, okay. Transgender. Sorry, I'm getting the terms wrong. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of them. It's easy to do. Yes. So, and and speaking of cisgender white males, <laughs> and and probably straight, yeah, straight too, right? There is a, yes. which you think it might be a joke. Did you send me so a link? So far, I sent you a link, yep. It's a HuffPo story. Uh, to mail? Oh, yeah, you yeah, did, okay. Yeah, to you, to Gmail. I will go there now. We're curious whether this is a joke or not. I almost want it to not be a joke, though. And Here. I think a lot of people, a lot of people are upset about it. I think it the is. The Straight White Guy Festival. Yeah, I think it is a joke because the city says that nobody's put in for the uh, park. But I'll bet you on the day of, there will be a bunch of people in that park doing it anyway. I want to go. Which would be awesome because I would totally do it. It's in Ohio. If it were, it's in Ohio. If it weren't, if it were closer, we should totally. Do I would one here go, in and I would be like a friend of. I would go and be yeah. like supporter of or friend of. In the same way, there's always been like straight but not narrow, like straight supporters of gay rights. Yeah, I would go and do this because I, on a, I'm starting to actually empathize with these people. I people who so are much. not minorities in any way, and they don't get to join the victim club at all, and yet. They're the one group that you're allowed to just treat say, we like get total the most. shite. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, well, white, straight white men in uh, yeah. particular. You get to be a woman, though. And you got, I get that's to a be huge, a woman, you but You heard that I'm woman ranting white. about how horrible it was to be a woman. Yeah. I'm still white, though, which has yeah. its own problems. Right. I get shouted down a lot for, well, you don't know because you're white. But straight white men. Like, oh. Not even me. Like, I have the gay thing. I have the gay yeah. card to so, play. Yeah, there's a little bit. <laughs> straight get, white men. So Ben is screwed. 
Yeah, Ben. No, well, he's no, Jewish. I already, I already oh, that's right. That he's Jewish. Jewish. He's Jewish. got the Jew card, which actually right now but is not white. the best card. Like, you can kind of hide that and not talk about it. I don't it. know. Oh, There's a lot of anti-Semitism coming up right now because of the yeah. whole Israeli thing, the whole Gaza-Israeli yeah. thing. Yeah. Although, which, I, I, yeah. Ugh. I don't know. It's I, some, there's some really interesting turns of events in that lately. I don't want to digress any further, though. Yeah. So let's get back to this. You digress. Uh, I, no, I digress a lot. Not digression. No. So there's a straight white guy festival that's not really a festival that's not really official. But like but you said, maybe so some people awesome. will show up. And I, if I were in, if I were local, I would show up as a supporter. I don't know. I think we should kind of, you know, maybe put some flyers around, do the same thing on the same day in solidarity. Oh. We could totally do that here in Manchester. I, I don't know how much effort I'm willing to put into it, but I would show up as a supporter well, and you I would just make have a fun. flyer and you just like meet at this park. Guys, we'll have a white guy festival. I just want to say as a gay man and as a bisexual woman, I think I can speak for all of us. We've shared our thoughts. And as a, a, a Jewish guy, <laughs> apparently, uh, we support you. Straight Absolutely. white guys. We are behind you. You've been taking a beating. You're, you're the cause of all the problems in the world, according to so many people. And I'm just not, I'm just not ready to hop on From that. From hundreds bandwagon. of years ago, which you had no control over. Heterosexual yes. pride. Before day. you were born. Yeah. I've way actually before been, you were born. By the way, I've changed my tune somewhat. For being born. I'm changing my tune somewhat because I have in the past said, oh, straight pride day. You don't, every day is straight pride day. Blah, 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 blah. That's kind of the thing that's happening. It's but like, well, no, it's not. It's, yeah. it's, it's straight I can, beat though. down day. But the thing is, I can now because yeah. I can, I feel like I could change my tune now because we really have made a lot of stro- progress. And, and let's be honest, we've made a lot of progress because a lot of straight white guys stopped being, start, started get, chilling out about these issues. Like, they got better. Well, the and, younger and, generations and they are did, perfectly so, cool with most of They deserve of it, some credit you know? for that, yeah. for at least not getting in the way anymore. Like not, you know, fighting less against gay marriage or whatever. I mean, I, I know that what I mean is uh, obviously they're ones who are getting in the way and they don't deserve any credit. But I'm saying the ones who stopped being bigots, who listened and go, OK, yes, I understand now. I'm not going to be a bigot anymore. You actually deserve credit for that. You, you're not a closed minded person. You got you, you, you got around it. You moved on. And now, frankly, they really are the whipping horse for everything. Like, every problem in the world. Oh, straight white guys. They did it. They're, they've got all this power. And I think it's exaggerated to some extent just how much power you have for being a straight white guy. I'm sorry. There's just too, way too many poverty-stricken white guys who do not. It's not like they have a red phone in their, in their trailer at the trailer park that they can pick up and talk to their congressman because he's also a white guy with a white penis and they can call him up and then just get their way. No, they don't. They, just by virtue of being a guy or white or male, uh, that was redundant, or straight, you don't suddenly just have power. You're not suddenly in a position of superiority to other people. I, I don't buy that. Uh, no, I don't either. Yeah, I mean, people try to it, say we it's do, such but collectivist no. thinking. As a libertarian, I'm like, that's incredibly collectivist thinking. They're all the same. They've all got incredible power over everyone else. Like You walk into a job, you just get the job. No, you don't. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, flaming freedom, LGBT libertarians, shooting the poop. We'll be back shortly. Stick around. We have one more segment. We're going to talk about how they're dumbing down tabletop RPGs. And I don't like that. We're going to talk about role-playing games because we're super geeky. And we got rid of the non-geek. <laughs> Not really. Lauren's <laughs> a little bit geeky. We'll see. Maybe we can more geekify her. Everybody's got their geek. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little snobby about my geekdom, and I'm yeah. going to read an excerpt about that. This is Flaming Freedom, where we discuss LGBT issues from a liberty perspective, except at the moment we're not. We're talking about something else, and that's my prerogative and our prerogative as geeks. So yeah. D&D Next is coming out. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like 5th edition, but they're calling yeah. it Next. They, they, well, it actually is 5th edition now. Is oh, what okay. Oh, good. I hate it when was they give Next weird names. Originally. Yeah, I which is, that. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, that. Please <sighs> stick with numbers. Right, it has no that gives it no context or meaning in the big scheme of things, and we know they're going to keep coming out with new editions so they can sell us more books and so on. <laughs> right? Well, it depends because Hasbro has been talking about getting rid of D and D for a little bit. Oof. Oh, okay. Well, so so the so the whole point of, a big point of this is that it simplifies a lot of things. It makes the game maybe easier to grasp and understand, and and does away a lot of complications. Without, uh, as, and anyway, people have a lot of thoughts about that, one way or the other. Some people like it, some people don't. Most people like some things about it, but not other things, to be honest. Which always happens. And I heard some things about it, and it does sound like they're doing some, some pretty massive simplifications. And I have a certain nostalgia for old D&D, 
right? And I'm going to read a post I made. It's a few paragraphs. Bear with me. On a, a, a website about role-playing games. It's called Giant in the Playground. It's a pretty cool site. So I said, I'm leery of these attempts to simplify the game. I feel like you sacrifice, I don't want to say realism, because that would be misleading. I don't want it to be particularly realistic, otherwise why play a fantasy game? Rather, I think you sacrifice a sense of immersion into what's happening. Yes, we're sort of telling a story together, and I get that low rules games are more about that. But less rules and guidelines for your abilities and your enemies makes everything feel more ambiguous. It makes it harder for me to push my I believe button that I am for a moment this character in this particular situation and there's a challenge before me that I must resolve. I could die or I could be rewarded for success. The more mushy the rules, the more it feels kind of pointless. I'm not clear on what my capabilities are. I'm not clear on the threat of what I'm facing. I've always enjoyed role playing, but that's far from all of the game for me. I enjoy the strategies and planning for ways to be more effective and all of that deteriorates in a light rules game or in a rules light game. I'm a geek. From the moment I discovered D&D, I immersed myself in the books. People made fun of me for having entire books memorized. I'm not as obsessive anymore. There are plenty here on the forum that put me to shame, but I like you people for that. You're so fracking geeky. The point is, I never got to play as much as I wanted to, but when I wasn't playing, I was enjoying learning all the rules, classes, spells, magic items. All that material was a banquet for me. I could never get enough. New Dragon Magazine articles with suggestions for how to make the rules even more complicated were table talks for us. We could spend hours at Denny's late at night after a game talking about them, and we loved it. We were enthralled. Maybe RPGs are so mainstream now that they're trying to appeal to the less geeky. People want it to be easier, I guess. For me, this is my obsession the same way sports is for someone else. Now I feel like lots of people want to play the game, but they kind of s suck compared to us, and they want us to dumb it down for them. I say let them have their league, and let's keep our own league for a different level of interest. And that's kind of what feels like D&D &D Next is kind of mainstreaming D&D &D for people who don't want to put the kind of energy into it that some of us geeks are willing to put into it. Well, I think uh, the point that you have is kind of incorrect in the fact that I don't think D&D &D Next is necessarily trying to appeal to... Uh, the the people that are more casual. I think D&D Next is trying to harken back to a previous time where the rules were simpler. I was going to say, wasn't first edition like it's, really almost like icons? It was so Well, open, second edition was D&D for a pretty long time. And then yeah. 3.5 yeah. has been D&D for a really long time. Well, I remember second edition is when it suddenly went like super like, okay, how fast can the arrow go? Okay, what's the friction of the air? The, I mean, that was, my, that that was, my, that was yeah. my introduction to D&D. And there were lots of charts. There were saving throw charts. There were all these charts and things. And armor class, saving throws. Uh... Uh, how many spells you had, depending on what level of a magic user you were. And, and then there were like lists and there was like big sections of, in a thick book about magic items and stuff. Now there's more. <laughs> there's I, even more than that. I oh, think yeah. part so. of the reason that uh, games are going more towards indie and less crunchy would be the term that would normally be used is because a lot of the players that are playing D&D are getting older and they have jobs and other things to do. This is directed at me. Ben has a job or Hammer has a job. Uh, I kind of, have a free schedule. I'm self-employed. <laughs> I have so a job. I can sit on. I can sit and browse Giant in the Playground way too much and talk yeah. about optimizations with people. And when I say optimizations, for instance, it's 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 knowing the rules really well so that you can design the character exactly the way you want and things like that, um, uh, and make them more effective. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, all that stuff. So I think so. that's why the rules like system has kind of taken over role playing hmm. games a bit more is because. People are getting older. It's the same thing with uh, console games, yeah. is they have to appeal to a certain generation, which is no longer the the 10-year-old. It's not kids that spend every moment outside of high school yeah, reading is, the books and getting excited about... See, don't you, don't you feel like there's well, that and wealth of... there are a of, lot more games now, I mean, too. I'm, I'm a creative person, I think. Uh, you guys are in my game. I've come up... You know, there's stuff that I hope is interesting, and I am creative. But I get inspired... A lot of my creativity, I feel like, was inspired and energized by all this wealth of content that's been out there and yes it takes time to consume that content it's like the difference between a person who wants to read lord of the rings and all the details oh, and someone who's like me. i know i I'm, this is a bad example maybe <laughs> no, it's fine I it's a perfect love, example actually but it's inspired so much of D, D lord there of the rings are very did, and, much two you know, schools 
of And then someone who wants a short book that I can get through quickly. Well, they're the you know? people who <laughs> they, they, they get off on the nuances. They really love getting it down to like the nitty gritty details of the physics mm. and how much can you honestly carry and things like that. And then there's the other school of play, which I'm more in, which mm. is I just want to play the game and enjoy it. I don't want it to be too realistic because that to me isn't fun. That's what I live. Yeah. You know, I live in a world where the physics is just thus and it only works this way and I have to have an exact sound and I can only carry so much. And I'm like, no, I just want to play the game and I want to enjoy being able to do crazy stuff without being yeah. bogged down by reality. I, I'm okay with that. I feel like for, to some extent. But. For you, Dale, the rules are like kind of a creative jumping point. For other people, they're a constraint. It's a total hurdle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just about the different kind of person too. Like I've okay played a lot of indie both. games and I'm perfectly happy sitting in front of a blank sheet and then like accidentally coming across a few ideas and filling in the rest and kind <laughs> of making my character that way. Yeah. When, when we did a, an into your game with you, it was kind of like, okay, where were my options? And yeah. for me, it was like, Oh, Make I have all of these options because we could just kind of create what we're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had a, the, the, well, we did the really rules like game and I had a, I was having a good time in it. That was Dresden, um, right? Right. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. But, I, uh, I enjoyed Dresden, but I was looking through the rules and stuff to try and make my character. And I only found like a couple of things that appealed to me. So that's what I made my character. And that's what inspired that character. Like, Oh, and then I really liked the character that I made, but I thought about that game and I'm like, there's really no other character I would enjoy playing. Well, the like, other he would thing be a, is, a very slight variation on this character, if anything. Yeah. You know? If you've read the books, you have a, not, not the, the gaming books, but the actual, Dresden books. Dresden Files series. If you've read that, you have a much better grasp. You have all those details. Well, but even they just then, came to you from even then. The books. Like the magic system in that book is so ambiguous. Like I, I, I didn't, I did well, not yeah, envy the guy who played a wizard in that game because anytime he tried to do something, he's like, oh, well, what, what do you want to do? There's not like there wasn't a spell that just said, here's the range, here's how much damage it does, here's the thing. Well, yeah. It was okay. You want to do that? Okay. Well, how long do you want it to last? Okay. Well, that's going to make it harder. Uh, it was actually. Like, there was just this sort of vague, here's an idea of what you can do, and if it's hard, this makes it harder, and then you roll and see if you do it. It was so vague that, like, he had to spend a long time figuring out if he could do it, and then what were his odds of doing it, and, and then, like, how much would it hurt him, and then... And at some point, I'm like, wow, this is, like, way more complicated than if they just gave us a list of the things you can do. But that's not how the magic works in that world. I so know. if you've read the series... No, I know that. You'd already I did read, know all I've read three so. of the books. It's I've read least. all 15 of them. I also, get that. I get that. <laughs> also, Dale, I've played games where that's, that's a very yeah. concrete magic system compared to. Yeah. And yeah. that actually true. works out pretty well compared to some of the, the free forms. you understand forms. in some ways that, that got it, made it more complicated. It, it does make it, it complicated. It does. bogged yeah. down the game because they didn't iron out exactly what he could do. Right. It, it's Tell really, me what he could do. It's pretty much made for people who read the books and yeah. already know all that stuff because we've read the other rule books. Do you feel like rule books. let's get back to something maybe our, so. our most of our listeners could follow a little bit? <laughs> Do you feel like it's getting because we did we kind of geeked out for a moment there and people are like, what? Oh, what right. the hell are they talking about now? Um, Turned it into the D and D podcast. Yeah. But I wonder how have are more people for look at look at movies for instance. Superhero movies are exploding. Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. Those are huge mainstream, big budget movies that everyone goes and sees. Harry Potter, fantasy, and science fiction are not geeky anymore. Well, I think the stigma and is that has same worn thing, off. Is I, it happening with RPGs? Are I, we, I have are they, a, are, is the mainstream ready for I, some RPGs well, that they see, can the that they can digest without reading five books? And we're done. Well, we're not done yet, but uh, well, yeah. I think that the reason it'll never be super popular is because it involves reading. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't. Have I've, I've got of, a great world, have videos real world example. It. I can I can give not now. In the next segment. Thanks, folks, for listening to Flaming Freedom. Listen to us next week. Bye bye. <laughs>